Hey guys, welcome back to Storytime with YDRC. Today, we're going to be continuing to read Warriors into the Wild. Now, last time, we left off at the beginning of chapter 17, so that's where we're going to start for today. So let's get started. Sun High came and went as the cats made their way through Wind Clan's old hunting grounds. Their heavy silence showed that they were still sore after the rat fight. Firepaw felt scratched and bitten all over. He could see Graypaw was limping, occasionally hopping on three legs to protect his injured back leg. But it was Blue Star who worried him most. Her pace was even slower now, but she refused to stop and rest. The grim look on her face, clouded by pain, told Firepaw how much she wanted to reach the ThunderClan camp. Don't worry about ShadowClan warriors, she meowed through gritted teeth as Tigerclaw paused to sniff the air. You won't find any here today. How could she be so sure? Firepaw wondered. They picked their way carefully down the, down the steep, rocky hillside that led to four trees and joined the familiar trail that led home. It was late afternoon, and Firepaw began to think longingly of his nest and a plump helping of fresh kale. I can still smell the stench of Shadow Clan, Graypaw muttered to Firepaw as they trekked through ThunderClan's hunting grounds. Perhaps the breeze has carried it down from WindClan's territory, Firepaw suggested. He could smell it too, and his whiskers were trembling. Suddenly, Ravenpaw stopped. Can you hear that? He mewed in a hushed voice. Firepaw strained his ears. At first, he heard only the familiar sounds of the forest, leaves rustling, a pigeon calling. Then his blood ran cold. In the distance, he could hear battle-hungry yowls and the shrill squeal of terrified kids. Quick, Blue Star howled. It is as StarClan warned me. Our camp is being attacked. She tried to leap forward, but stumbled. She pushed herself up and limped onward. Tigerclaw and Firepaw pelted forward side by side. Graypaw and Ravenpaw swallowed their, followed. Their tail fur bristled to twice its usual size. Firepaw forgot his soreness as he charged toward the camp. His only concern was to protect the clan. The sounds of the battle grew louder and louder as he neared the camp entrance, and the stench of Shadow Clan filled his nostrils. He was right behind Tigerclaw as the cats dashed through the tunnel and into the clearing. They were met by a frenzy of fighting, ThunderClan cats being battling furiously with Shadow Clan warriors. The kits were out of sight, and Firepaw hoped they were safely hidden in the nursery. He guessed the weakest elders would be sheltering inside the hollow trunk of their fallen tree. Every corner of the camp seemed alive with warriors. Firepaw could see Frostfur and Goldenflower clawing and biting at a huge gray tom. Even the young tabby queen Brindleface was fighting, though she was very close to kidding. Darkstripe was locked in a fierce tussle with a black warrior. Three of the elders, Small Ear, Patchbelt, and One Eye, were nipping bravely at a tortoise shell who fought with twice their speed and ferocity. The returning cats hurled themselves into battle. Firepaw caught hold of a tabby warrior queen, much larger than him, and sank his teeth deep into her leg. She yowled with pain and turned on him, lashing out with sharp claws and lunging at his neck with her teeth bared. He twisted and ducked to avoid her bite. <coughs> she couldn't match his speed, and he managed to grasp her from behind and pull her down into the dirt. With his strong hind legs, he clawed at her back until she squealed and struggled away from him, running headlong into the thick undergrowth that surrounded the camp. Firepaw glanced over to see that Blue Star had arrived. Despite her injuries, she was fighting another tabby. Firepaw had never seen her fight before, but even wounded, she was a powerful opponent. Her victim struggled to escape, but she held him tightly and clawed him so fiercely that Firepaw knew he would bear the scars of his fight for many moons. Then he saw a white Shadow Clan cat with jet black paws dragging a ThunderClan elder away from the nursery. Firepaw remembered those unusual dark paws from the gathering. Blackfoot. The Shadow Clan deputy, deputy made quick work of killing the elder, who had been guarding the kits, and began to reach into the bramble nest with one massive paw. 
The kids were squealing and mewing. Def undefended now as their mothers wrestled with the other Shadow Clan warriors in the clearing. Fairpaw prepared to spring toward the nursery, but a claw sliced painfully down his side, and he whipped around to see a scrawny tortoise shell leap on top of him. As he slammed into the ground, he tried to call out to the other Thunder Clan cats that the kids were in danger, fighting with all his strength to escape the tortoise shell's grid. He wrenched, he wrenched his head around so he could see the bramble nest. Blackfoot had scooped two kits from their bedding already and was reaching in for a third. Fairpaw saw no more as the tortoise shell raked his belly with her hind claws. Fairpaw scrabbled onto his feet and crouched low, as if in defeat. The trick had worked before and it worked now, as the tortoise shell gripped him triumphantly and began to sink her teeth into Fairpaw's neck. Fairpaw sprang upward as hard as he could and flung the warrior away. He spun around and was on the winded warrior in an instant. This time he showed no mercy, plunging his te teeth deep into the cat's shoulder. The bite sent the she-cat howling into the undergrowth. Fairpaw jumped up, dashed over to the nursery, and thrust his head through the nursery entrance. Blackfoot was nowhere to be seen. Inside the nest, crouching over the terrified kits, was Yellowfang. Her gray fur was spattered with blood and one of her eyes was painfully swollen. She looked up at Fairpaw with a ferocious hiss. Then, realizing it was him, she yowled, they're okay, I'll protect them. Fairpaw looked at her as she calmed the helpless kids, and Broken Star's dire warning about the Shadow Clan rogue flashed through his mind. He didn't have time to think about that now. He would have to trust Yellowfang. He nodded quickly and ducked back out of the brambles. There were now only a few Shadow Clan cats left in the camp. Ravenpaw and Graypaw were fighting side by side, lashing out at a black tom until he fled howling into the bushes. Whitestorm and Darkstripe chased the last two intruders out of the camp, sending them off with a few extra scratches and bites. Firepaw sat down, exhausted, and stared around the camp. It was devastated. Blood splattered the clearing, and tufts of fur drifted in the dust. The surrounding wall of undergrowth was ripped open where the invaders had crashed through. One by one, the Thunderclan cats gathered beneath the high rock. Greypaw came to sit by him, his sides heaving and blood trickling from a torn ear. Ravenpaw flopped down and began to lick a wound on his tail. The queens ran to the nursery to check on the kids. Fairpaw found himself waiting tensely for their return, his view blocked by the other cats. He relaxed when he heard squeals and purrs of joy coming from a bramble nest. Frostfur wove her way back through the crowd, followed by Yellowfang. The White Queen stepped forward and addressed them. Our kits are all safe, thanks to Yellowfang. A Shadow Clan warrior killed brave Rosetail and was trying to steal them from our, their nest, but Yellowfang fought him off. It was no ordinary Shadow Clan warrior either, Firepaw put in. He was determined to let the clan know how much they owed Yellowfang. I saw him. It was Blackfoot. The Shadow Clan deputy, meowed Brindleface, who had fought so bitterly to protect the unborn kits in her swollen belly. There was a stir at the edge of the group as Blue Star limped forward and made her way over to the apprentices. Her grave expression on her face was enough to tell Fairpaw that something was wrong. Spotted Leaf is with Lionheart. She murmured, he was injured in the battle. It looks <coughs> bad. She turned her head toward the shadow on the far side of the high rock where the warrior lay, a motionless bundle of dusty golden fur. A high-pitched wail rose from Greypaw's throat and he raced over to Lionheart. Spotted Leaf, who had been leaning over the ThunderClan deputy, stepped back to let the young apprentice share tongues for the last time with his mentor. As Greypaw's howl of grief echoed around the clearing, Fairpaw's fur tingled and his blood ran cold. It was the cry he had heard in his dream. For a moment, his head swam. Then he gave himself a shake. He had to keep calm, for Greypaw's sake. Fairpaw looked at Blue Star, who nodded, and he padded over to join his friend by the high rock. He stopped for a moment beside the spotted leaf. He looked exhausted and dull-eyed with grief. I can't help Lionheart now, she mewed quietly to him. He is on his way to join Star Clan. 
She pressed her body against Farpa's side, and he felt comforted by the touch of her warm fur. The other cats looked on in silence as the sun slowly set behind, behind the trees. Finally, Graypa sat up and cried, He's gone! He lay down again beside Lionheart's body and rested his head on his front paws. The rest of the clan walked silently forward to carry out their own grieving rituals for their beloved deputy. Farapaw joined them. He liked Lionheart's neck and murmured, Thank you for your wisdom. You taught me so much. Then he sat down beside Graypaw and began gently to groom his friend's ears. <coughs> Bluestar waited until the other cats had left before padding quietly up. Graypaw didn't even seem to notice his leader's presence. Farapaw looked away as Bluestar spoke her last words to her old friend. Oh, what am I going to do without you, Lionheart? She whispered. Then she limped back to her den and crouched down outside, staring grief-stricken into the distance. She didn't even try to lick clean her bloody matted fur. <coughs> it was the first time Farapaw had seen her look utterly defeated, and he felt a chill run through him. He sat with Graypaw and Lionheart until the moon rose high. Ravenpaw joined him, and together they kept company with their grieving friend. Tigerclaw strode briefly, strode over and briefly shared tongues with Lionheart. Farapaw waited to hear what words he would share with his warrior friend, but Tigerclaw remained silent as he licked the matted fur. To Farapaw's confusion, the dark tabby's eyes seemed to be fixed on Ravenpaw rather than the fallen deputy. Spotted Leaf padded lightly around the camp, tending to wounds and battered nerves. Farapaw watched her approach Blue Star twice but each time the leader sent her away to see the others. Only when Spotted Leaf had attended to the wounds of all the other cats did Blue Star allow her to treat her bites and scratches. When she had finished, Spotted Leaf turned and walked back to her den. Blue Star stood and slowly hauled herself up onto the high rock. The clan cats seemed to have been waiting for her. As soon as she settled herself in her usual spot, they began to gather in the clearing below unusually silent and somber face. Farpaw and Ravenpaw got stiffly to their paws and joined them, leaving Graypaw behind with Lionheart's body. <coughs> the Grey Apprentice was still lying with his nose, resting against Lionheart's cooling golden pelt. Farpaw guessed Blue Star would excuse Graypaw from the clan meeting this time. It is nearly mu moon high, meowed Blue Star as Farpaw slipped into place next to Ravenpaw. And it is once more my duty, much, much too soon, to name ThunderClan's new deputy. Her voice was tired and cracked with sadness. Farpaw looked from warrior to warrior. They were all looking expectantly at Tigerclaw. Even Whitestorm had turned to watch the dark tabby. From the bold expression on his face and the way his twi whiskers twitched in anticipation, Tigerclaw seemed to agree with them. Blue Star took a deep breath and continued. I say these words before the body of Lionheart, so that his spirit may hear and approve my choice. She hesitated. I have not forgotten how one cat avenged the death of Redtail and brought his body back to us. ThunderClan needs this fearless loyalty even more now. Blue Star paused again and then meowed the name loud and clear. Tigerclaw will be the new deputy of ThunderClan. There was a yowl of approval, with the loudest voices belonging to Darkstripe and Longtail. Whitestorm sat calmly, his eyes closed, his tail wrapped neatly around him. He was nodding slowly and approvingly. Tigerclaw lifted his chin proudly, his eyes half closed as he listened to the clan. Then he st stalked through the cloud, accepting tributes with the smallest of nods, and leaped up onto the high rock beside Blue Star. ThunderClan! he yelled. I am honored to accept the position of clan deputy. I never expected to gain such high rank, but by the spirit of Lionheart, I vow to serve you as best I can. He gravely dipped his head, fixing the crowd with his wide yellow eyes, and jumped down from the high rock. Farpaw heard Ravenpaw murmur, Oh no, under his breath beside him. He turned to look curiously at his friend. 
Ravenpaw's head was hanging low. She should never have chosen him, he muttered. Are you talking about Tigerclaw? Firefall whispered. He's wanted to be deputy since he took care of Redtail, Fair Ravenpaw mewed. He stopped abruptly. Took care of Redtail? Firepaw echoed. His mind suddenly raced with questions. What did Ravenpaw know? At the gathering, had his account of the battle with RiverClan been true? Was Tigerclaw responsible for Redtail's death? Chapter 18. Are you telling how Firepaw, are you telling Firepaw how I protected Redtail? Firepaw felt a cold shiver ruffle the fur on the back of his neck. Ravenpaw whipped around, his eyes wide with fear. Tigerclaw seemed to loom over them, his lips drawn back in a menacing snarl. Firepaw jumped up and faced the new deputy. He was just saying that he wished you'd been here to take care of Lionheart as well. That's all, he mewed, thinking quickly. Tigerclaw looked from one to the other, then stalked away in silence. Ravenpaw's green eyes clouded with terror, and he started to tremble uncontrollably. Ravenpaw? Firepaw meowed in alarm, but Ravenpaw didn't even look up. With his head held low, he slunk back to Greypaw and crouched next to him, pressing his skinny black body next to Greypaw's thick fur as if he was suddenly cold. Firepaw looked helplessly at his two friends as they huddled beside Lionheart's body. Not knowing what else to do, he padded over and settled himself beside them, ready to sit out the night. As the moon passed overhead, other cats came to join their vigil. Blue Star arrived at last, once the camp was calm and quiet. She said nothing, but sat a little way off, gazing at her dead deputy with an expression of such unbearable grief that Firepaw had to look away. <coughs> at dawn, a group of elders came to take place, take Lionheart's body away to the burial place. Greypaws followed to help dig the hole where the great warrior should, would rest. Firepaw yawned and stretched. He felt chilled to the bone. Leaffall was nearly here now, and the woods were clouded with mist. But above the leaves, Firepaw saw a rosy morning sky. He watched Greypaw disappear into the dew-soaked undergrowth with the elders. Ravenpaw jumped to his paws and hurried back to the apprentice's den. Firepaw followed him slowly. By the time he arrived, the black cat was curled up with his nose tucked under his tail, as if asleep. Firepaw was too exhausted to speak. He circled around on his mossy bed and then settled down for a long sleep. Wake up! Firepaw heard Dustpaw's voice calling through the den entrance. He opened his eyes. Ravenpaw was already awake, sitting bolt upright with his ears pricked. Greypaw was stirring beside him. Firepaw was surprised to see the familiar gray shape. He hadn't heard him come back after burying Lionheart. Blue Stars called another meeting, Dustpaw hissed at them, and ducked out of the ferns. The three apprentices crawled out of the warm den. The sun was already past its height, and the air felt cooler than before. Firepaw shivered, and his belly growled. He couldn't remember the last time he had eaten, and he wondered briefly if he would have the chance to hunt today. Firepaw and Greypaw and Ravenpaw hurried back to join the crowd gathered below the high rock. Tigerclaw was speaking from his position beside Blue Star. During the battle, our leader lost another life. Now that she has only four of her nine lives left, I am going to appoint a bodyguard to stay at her side constantly. No cat will be allowed to approach her unless the guards are present. His amber eyes flicked to Ravenpaw and then back to the rest of the crowd. Dark stripe and long tail, he continued, turning his gaze on the warriors. You will act as Blue Star's, Blue Star's guards. Dark stripe and long tail nodded importantly and sat taller. Blue Star now spoke. Her voice sounded gentle and calming after her deputies commanding the owl. Thank you, Tigerclaw, for your loyal loyalty. But the clan must understand that I am still here for them. No cat should hesitate to approach me, 
and I am happy to speak to anyone with or without my bodyguards. Her eyes darted briefly in Tyrkowal's direction. As the warrior code says, the safety of the clan is more important than the security of any single member. She paused, and her sky blue gaze rested briefly on Firecall. And now, I wish to invite Yellowfang to join Thunder Clan. clan. Meows of surprise rose from some of the warriors. Blue Star looked at Frostfur, who nodded in her agreement. The other queens looked on silently. Blue Star continued. Her actions last night proved that she is brave and loyal. If she wishes it, we would welcome her as a full member of this clan. From her place at the edge of the crowd, Yellowfang looked up at the clan leader and murmured, I am honored, Blue Star, and I accept your offer. Good, meowed Blue Star, her voice firm as if the matter was now closed. Firepaw purred with delight and nudged Graypaw. He was surprised to realize just how much Blue Star's public show of trust in Yellowfang meant to him. Blue Star began to speak again. Last night, we successfully defended ourselves against Shadow Clan, but they are still a great threat. The repair work we began this morning will continue. Our boundaries will be patrolled constantly. We must not assume that the war is over. Tiger Claw stood up, his tail held high, and glared down at the assembled cats. Shadow Clan attacked while we were away from camp, he growled. They chose their moment well. How did they know that the camp was so poorly defended? Do they have eyes inside our camp? Firepaw froze in horror as Tigerclaw fixed his cold stare on Ravenpaw. Some of the cats followed their new deputy's gaze and stared in puzzlement at the black apprentice. Ravenpaw looked at the ground and shifted his paws nervously. Tigerclaw went on. We still have a while before sunset. We must concentrate on rebuilding our camp. Meanwhile, if you suspect anything, or anyone, tell me. Be assured, anything you say will be in confidence. He nodded to dismiss the clan, then turned and began murmuring to Blue Star. <coughs> the cats separated and began to move around the camp, assessing damage and forming work groups. Ravenpaw, Firepaw called, still shocked by Tigerclaw's dark hint that his own apprentice had betrayed the clan. But Ravenpaw had already bounded away, Firepaw could see him offering to help Halftail and Whitestorm before rushing off to collect twigs so they could patch in the holes in the boundary wall. Ravenpaw clearly didn't want to talk. Let's go and help him, suggested Graypaw. His voice was flat and exhausted, and his eyes were dull. You go. I'll be there in a moment, Firepaw answered. First, I want to check on Yellowfang, see if she's okay after her fight with Blackfoot. He looked for Yellowfang in her nest by the fallen tree. She was stretched out in the shadows, her eyes thoughtful. Firepaw, she purred when he, she saw him. I'm glad you have come. I wanted to check that you were all right, Firepaw mewed. Old habits stay longer than old sense, eh? Meowed Yellowfang with a flash of her old spirit. <coughs> I suppose so, Firepaw confessed. How are you feeling? This old leg injury is playing up again. But I'll be fine, Yellowfang told him. <coughs> How did you manage to fight Blackfoot off? Farpa asked, unable to keep the admiration out of his voice. <coughs> Blackfoot's strong, but he's not a clever fighter. Fighting, <coughs> fighting you was more of a challenge. Farpa looked for the flicker of humor in the old cat's eyes, but there was none. She continued, I've known him since he was a kid. He hasn't changed. A bully, but no brains. Firepaw sat down beside her. I'm not surprised Blue Star asked you to join the clan, he purred. You certainly showed your loyalty last night. Yellowfang twitched her tail. Perhaps a truly loyal cat would have fought at the side of the clan that raised her. But then I'd be fighting for my two legs, Firepaw pointed out. Yellowfang shot him an admiring glance. Well said, youngster. But then you have always you have always been a thinker. Sorrow pierced Firepaw's heart as he remembered these were Lionheart's words too. Do you miss Shadow Clan? he asked Yellowfang. Yellowfang blinked slowly. I miss the old Shadow Clan, she meowed at last. The way it used to be. 
Until Broken Star became leader? Firepaw was curious. Yes, Yellowfang admitted softly. He changed the clan. She gave a wheezy laugh. He always knew how to give, give a good speech. He could make you believe a mouse was a rabbit if he set his mind to it. Perhaps that's why I was so blind to his faults. The old she-cat stared into the distance, lost in memories. Bet you can't guess who the new ShadowClan medicine cat is, Farrakhan mewed, suddenly remembering he had learned at the gathering. It felt like many moons ago. His words seemed to shake Yellowfang back into the present. Not running those, she meowed. Yep, Yellowfang shook her head. But he can't even cure his own cold. That's what Grandpa said. They purred together for a moment, amused. Farrakhan got to his paws. I'll leave you to rest now. Call me if you need anything else today. Yellowfang lifted her head. Before you go, Farrakhan, I hear you are in a rat fight. Did they draw blood? It's okay. Spotted Leaf has treated my wounds with some marigold. Sometimes marigold is not strong enough for rat bites. Go and find a patch of wild garlic to roll in it. I think there's some not far off the camp entrance. That will draw out any poisons the rats may have left. Although, she added dryly, your den mates might not thank uh, your den mates might not thank me for my advice. Well, I do. Thanks, Yellowfang. Firepaw purred. Go carefully, young one. Yellowfang held his gaze for a moment, then let her chin rest on her front paws and closed her eyes. Firepaw slipped under the branches around Yellowfang's nest and headed for the gorse tunnel in search of the wild garlic. The sun was setting now, and he could hear the queens settling their kits for the night. <coughs> Where do you think you're going? growled a voice from the shadows. It was Darkstripe. Yellowfang told me to go out and... You don't take orders from that road, hissed the warrior. Go and help with the repairs. No cat is to leave the camp tonight. He lashed his tail from side to side. Yes, Darkstripe, Farpa mewed, dipping his head submissively. He turned and muttered Darkstripe under his breath, then headed toward the camp boundary where he could see Graypaw and Ravenpaw busily patching a large hole in the wall of greenery. How's Yellowfang? asked Graypaw as Firepaw trotted up. She's fine. She said wild garlic would be better would be good for my rat bites. I was on my fine I was on my way to find some, but Darkstripe ordered me to stay in camp, Firepaw told him. Wild garlic? mewed Graypaw. I wouldn't mind trying that. My life still stings. I could sneak out and get some, Farapaw offered. He had resented Darkstripe's offhand treatment and welcomed the chance to outwit him. No one would notice if I slipped out of this hole here. It'd only take a couple of rabbit hops. Ravenpaw frowned, but Graypaw nodded. We'll cover for you, he whispered. Farapaw nuzzled him gratefully and jumped out of the out of the tear in the boundary wall. Once outside the camp, he began to make his way to the wild garlic patch, the sharp tang alerting him easily to its location. The moon was rising in the violet sky as the sun sank below the horizon. A cold breeze ruffled Firepaw's fur. Suddenly, he caught a cat scent carried toward him on the wind. He sniffed cautiously. Shadow clan? No, just tired claw and two other cats. He sniffed the air again. Darkstripe and Longtail. What were, what were they doing here? Curious, Firepaw dropped into a stalking position. He prowled through the undergrowth by paw by paw, keeping downwind so that he was not de detected. The warriors were standing in the shadow of a clump of ferns, their heads very close together. Soon, Firepaw was near enough to hear them speak. Star Clan knows. My apprentice has shown little promise from the start, but I never expected him to turn traitor, growls Tiger Claw. Firepaw's eyes widened and his fur prickled with shock. It sounded like Tiger Claw intended to do more than just hint at Ravenpaw that Ravenpaw had betrayed the clan. 
How long did you say Ravenpaw was miss missing on the journey to Mothermouth? asked Darkstripe. Long enough to have traveled to ShadowClan's camp and back, came the deputy's menacing answer. The fur on Firepaw's tail bristled angrily. That's impossible, he thought. He was with us the whole time. Longtail's voice sounded now, high-pitched with excitement. We must have told them that ThunderClan's leader and the strongest warrior had left the camp. Why else would they attack when they did? We are the last clan to stand against ShadowClan. We must remain strong, purred Tigerclaw. His voice had become velvety soft now. He waited in the silence for a response. It was Darkstripe who answered eagerly, as if he were still Tigerclaw's apprentice, giving the correct answer to a question on hunting techniques. His words made Firepaw breathless with fear. And the clan will be better off without a traitor like Ravenpaw. I have to say I agree with you, Darkstripe, murmured Tigerclaw, his voice heavy with emotion, even though he's my own apprentice. He trailed off as if he were too upset to say any more. Firepaw had heard enough. Forgetting all about the wild garlic, he turned and crept as silently and quickly as he could back toward the camp. He decided not to tell Ravenpaw what he had heard. He would be terrified. Firepaw's mind raced. What could he do? Tigerclaw was the clan deputy, a great warrior, and popular with all the other cats. No one was going to listen to any accusations made by an apprentice, but Ravenpaw was in terrible danger. Firepaw shook himself, trying to clear his head. There was only one thing to do. He must tell what he had heard to Blue Star and somehow convince her that he was telling the truth. Okay, that's where we're going to end it off for this episode of Warriors Into the Wild. <coughs> uh, so as always, before we end it off for today, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. That's it. Bye, guys.